Today's topic of discussion is the overview of the proof of Fermat's last theorem that was given by Sir Andrew Wiles. Now let's have a look on the statement. It states that the expression a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n has no positive integer solutions for a, b, c and for any integer n greater than or equal to 3. So Andrew Wiles had proven this by the method of contradiction. Now let's come to the overview of the proof. As we are using the method of contradiction, we must first assume that the FLT is false. It means that there exist non-zero integer solutions for a, b, c for n greater than 2. This gives us an elliptic curve which is also called the phrase curve considering these two above conditions. Now this elliptic curve has no associated modular forms considering the above conditions. But Andrew Wiles had proven that all the elliptic curves have some associated modular forms which leads to the contradiction. Now let's talk about elliptic curves. These curves can be represented as y square equals to g of x where g of x is a cubic polynomial. Now if we plot the graph of this equation we get four different types of plots. But keeping in mind the present situation we need to avoid those plots which have sharp points or knot like structures like the third and the fourth one. These special type of curves are said to be modular which are currently on the screen and we will be talking about them. Now let's talk about modular forms or modular functions. A function is said to be modular if it follows the following expression. Here f of z is a holomorphic function. It means that every point in the neighborhood of a point in the field is analytic. And here the matrix of a, b, c, d belongs to the set of 2 by 2 matrices with integers with integer elements and determinant 1. Also z lies on the upper half of the argon plane which means that the imaginary part of z is greater than 0 and here k is essentially a positive integer. I will not go deep into the explanation of the Galois representation but I will give a simple overview as it is significant. Consider a field of algebraic numbers q bar. This Galois representation is simply the automorphisms in q bar. We will be using this particular notation from now on. It actually means that the Galois representation is worked on the p-torsion points of the curve. Uh, that is the elliptic curve obviously. Now let's come to the greater outline of the proof. Assuming that the FLT is wrong, we can create a semi-stable elliptic curve E which is never modular which I have already discussed that it is called the phrase curve and it is the semi-stable elliptic curve is created on the basis of the previous expression that is the FLT we have assumed that FLT is wrong and on the basis of that we can create a semi-stable elliptic curve E which is never modular. Now Wiles had proven that if this E has Galois representation rho EP that is modular then E is also modular. If rho EP is modular then all other related Galois representations are modular for all prime P. Now this third and the fourth, pro this fourth point forms the lifting theorem and this is significant as we will be using it later on. And further we can say that every elliptic curve can be either reducible or irreducible. Now if rho EP is modular and irreducible subject to some technical conditions the elliptic curve E is also modular. So this is known. Another known thing is that that rho E3 is irreducible. If rho E3 is irreducible then it is modular. And if the representation is both irreducible and modular, then the elliptic curve is also modular. Wiles found that for prime equals to 3, when representation is reducible, it is easier to work with p equals to 5 and use the lifting theorem to prove uh, that rho E5 is modular than to directly show that rho E3 is modular. If rho E3 and rho E5 are both reducible, 
then row e5 must be modular. Now, if row e3 and row e5 are both irreducible, Wiles showed that there exists another semi-stable elliptic curve f such that row f5 is irreducible and also row e5 and row f5 are isomorphic. It means that they are more or less the same. Now clearly row f3 is modular as all irreducible representations with p equals to 3 are modular as already explained earlier. Now if f is modular then row f5 must also be modular. Uh, it's quite obvious. Now row e5 is modular because I've already mentioned that row e5 and row f5 are isomorphic in nature. So if row f5 is modular then row e5 must also be modular. Now, if row E3 is reducible and row E5 is modular, so the elliptic curve is modular. It means that no matter what the initial condition is, the elliptic curve E is modular in all cases. So we can particularly see that that our, assume, that our assumption that we had already taken, that the phrase curve 1 that we had already taken, it had no modular forms. It means that it, it had no associated modular forms. It means that their function or the elliptic curve was not modular. But here, Andrew Wiles had proven that every elliptic curve is modular. So this gives us the required contradiction and hence proves that the FLT is Correct.